Hey everybody, welcome to my video on scientific notation. And what if I asked you the question, what is the weight of the Earth without using scientific notation? And assuming that you actually knew the answer to that question, here's how you would have to write your answer. The weight of the Earth is the number 1, 3, followed by a whole bunch of zeros, and I wrote our answer in pounds. And I think many of you, just by looking at this number, realize why we need to use scientific notation. Um, imagine if we had to multiply this large number by another number. Or, or imagine if we had to type this number into a computer or a calculator. Uh, most, most calculators don't even have the capacity to, to enter this many digits. And even if it did, um, you probably would, would enter the wrong number of zeros because there's so many. Um, and the Earth isn't even that big. You know, the Sun is 340 thousand times larger than the Earth. So this is why we need to use scientific notation. Um, if we rewrote the weight of the Earth using scientific notation, our answer would be 1.3 multiplied by 10 with a 25 exponent on top of the 10. And once again, our answer is in pounds. So scientific notation allows us to take this large number and to rewrite it in a shorter much simpler way. And this also works for really small numbers as well. Um, scientific notation allows us to take really small numbers and rewrite them in a shorter, much simpler way as well. So let's get started on some examples and I think this will make a lot more sense. So first let's take a number that is in scientific notation and convert it into a regular number. So let's say that we have 5.7 multiplied by 10 with a exponent of 8. And whenever you multiply by 10, you're actually moving the decimal point one time to the right. Um, since we're multiplying by 10 8 times, we're actually moving the decimal 8 times to the right. So, so we have our number 5.7 and we're moving the decimal point 8 times to the right. So let's take our decimal point and move it 8 times to the right. 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, seven, eight, and our new decimal point is going to be right here. And after you move the decimal point, you need to fill in zeros in all of the empty spaces. So our final answer after we move the decimal point is 570 million. And our decimal point is going to be all the way on the right which is unnecessary, so I'm not going to write it. So 5.7 times 10 to the eighth is equal to 570 million. So now let's go over an example with a really small number. Let's say we have 5.7 times 10 with a negative 8 exponent. Many people think when they see this negative exponent that the answer is going to be negative, but that is completely wrong. Uh, this negative exponent uh, just means that we have a really small number and we're going to move our decimal point to the left. So, so we, have, we have the number 5.7 and we need to move the decimal point 8 times to the left. Alright, so if we, we take our decimal and we move it 8 times to the left, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, eight, it's going to be in this new position right here. And once again, we need to fill in zeros in all of the empty spaces. So our final answer is 0 0.0000057. And I want you to notice how with a negative exponent, we had a really small final answer. And with a positive exponent, we had a really large final answer. Um, so that is a good way to double check if you actually move the decimal point in the right direction. Now let's go over some examples of converting regular numbers into scientific notation. Let's say we had the number 18,500,000 and we needed to convert this number into scientific notation. And right now, since you don't see a decimal point, you can assume that it's on the right. Now we need to move this decimal point to the non-zero digit that is farthest to the left. 
So the non-zero digit that is farthest to the left is this number one. And if we move the decimal point in front of that number, we have to move it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. And now we can place our decimal in front of the leading digit. So now let's take a look at all of our non-zero digits. Notice how inside of our box, now we have the number 1.85. So we have the number 1.85 and we moved the decimal point seven times. So we need to put a seven exponent on top of the 10. And notice how I put a positive seven because we started with a really large number. So a large number has a positive exponent. And if you wanted to round to one decimal point, you could round up and you can also say 1.9 times 10 to the seventh. Now let's go over another example with a really small number. Uh, let's say we had 0 0.00000185. So we need to convert this into scientific notation. So we need to move the decimal points in front of the leading digit or in front of the non-zero digit that is farthest to the left. So once again, this is the number one. So we need to move the decimal point in front of the number one. So how many sp spaces did the decimal point just move? Well, it started over here and it moved one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces. And once again, if we look at all of our non-zero digits, we have the number 1.85. So we have the number 1.85 and we moved the decimal point seven units. So we know that on top of the 10, we're gonna have an exponent of negative seven. Since we started with a small number, we know that our, our exponent is going to be negative. Um, so this is our final answer, 1.85 times 10 to the negative seven. So I hope this gave you a good idea on converting in and out of scientific notation. In my next video, I'm going to talk about multiplying and dividing in scientific notation. So stay tuned for that. I really hope that you're enjoying these and I will see you in my next one.